Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm your host Edgar and today we're going to be talking about a really cool gun and this happens to be a grail gun that was on my list of guns I've been looking for for a long time, probably 15 years. And uh, the reason why it was hard to find, especially here in New England I guess, is because it's the uh, 92 FS Centurion, but it's the double action, single action. Um, the Centurions came out in around 92. Uh, in production until 2004, mostly for the police market, the uh, and especially in 40 caliber. Uh, 40 caliber was all the rage back then, and a lot of companies were coming out with their version. And so Beretta came out with the 96, and then shortly after they came out with the Centurion uh, for the police market, and often only in the double action only. Uh, and I've had a couple of those. Uh, I love Beretta 92 series, and I've had probably, oh God, more than 15 of them in the past 30 years. Um, I've had, I think, six or seven or so of the full size, uh, all in double action, single action, um, in nine millimeter. And then I had a couple, probably three or four full size 96s, FS. They don't say FS on them, but they're all FS. They all came out after uh, the safety features were incorporated and the improvements in it. That's when the 96 came out. So they're all FS, even if it doesn't say it on the slide, unless it's a G model, which is uh, decocker only, and then it'll be 96 G. Um, but I, I really wanted a 92 version uh, of the series, of the nine millimeter version. Uh, and I also had, I think one double action only 40 caliber 96 Centurion. And I had uh, the full size 96s, but I never had a nine millimeter, and I've been looking for a long time. I could have bought it on the uh, on the auction sites, but because the frame is aluminum, it, it might look good on the outside. I really want to feel that slide the frame fit, so be sure it has good accuracy. If, if the gun had fifteen thousand rounds run through it or something, but it was a safe queen, otherwise it's going to look good on the other side. But you might have a lot of wear on those rails. It's full size rails on these guns, which is really nice and they hold up really well, a lot like the SIGs. But still, you put that many rounds to it and the gun's gonna be coming near the end of its life. And I don't wanna spend 80% of a new gun for a gun that's near its end of its life. So I, I really wanna get my hands on it and I've been looking for a long time. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was about 100 miles from home in the state I live in and uh, I happened to go through this little town and on a whim, I was walking around and I came across a little gun store and I walked in and there it was sitting in the case. I couldn't believe it. I bought it on the spot. Uh, it came with three magazines for a really good price. Um, it was an ex-police gun. Um, so it did have uh, a lot of wear on the aluminum, but otherwise it, it's really tight and was, wasn't was shot a lot. And that's exactly what I was looking for. Uh, this one was made in 1997, issued to police or government agency. I'll let you know how I know that in a minute. Um, but the, uh, here, let's clear it first before we start handling it. I always clear them, but we'll do that on camera. Nothing in there. This is a totally clear gun. Um, so yeah, so that's the history of the Centurions. Um, now I imagine if a lot of the police departments, like I think in California and the upper, uh, Northwest, you know, Washington and Oregon and so forth, I think there's a lot of police agencies back in the nineties and two thousands that were carrying the Beretta. So maybe uh, that area might uh, have more that are gonna bleed over into the uh, commercial market when the retail market, when the, uh, when the agencies get rid of their guns, you know, local police departments or something. Uh, but here in New England, um, I don't think it was really a, a big gun to carry, except um, I know the Hartford uh, State Police carried, were early adopters in the 80s of the 92 series. Um, so they were early adopters of, the, of automatics, as was Illinois, I believe. Um, but I never came across one. And I was a, a manager of a gun store for a couple of years. I worked for other gun stores and I've never seen one. Um, the compacts, I had no problem. I had about six or seven compacts through the years. As you can tell, I love the 92 series. Um, oh, a, a real quick aside, of all the bread as I've owned in my life, I have never had a single malfunction or a jam on any of my breadas. And that's like, amazing absolutely amazing and there's a reason why uh, the open slide design and the reason why the government and other police agency used it quite often back then uh, is because of its ultra uh, reliability because of that open slide design for one thing it's never going to have a stovepipe 
or anything like that. But anyway, that's a really cool sign on how reliable it is. It has to be run wet though. After a while, it's gonna start losing that reliability if you let it get really dirty and run dry, and run dry just like a lot of guns. Uh, so as long as you do that, you're, you're really good to go. And you replace the springs like you should on any auto anyway. Um, a lot of people just don't replace the springs and they put 10,000 through it. You wanna replace that after 3,000 or 4,000 depending on the manufacturer's uh, recommendations. All right, so let's get into this example and uh, we'll show you why it's such a cool gun. Um, for me, the shorter barrel guns I like already. Um, I was a armed protective security uh, back in the early 80s and I carried a combat commander, that's the all steel, with a, um, with a shorter slide um, and barrel than the full size 45. And I find that the full grip guns with a shorter barrel, I can get back on target a lot quicker than a five inch barrel. Uh, so that's why I like them so much and, and they're easy to carry getting uh, in and out of vehicles and things like that. Uh, so that's why I, I really tend to like the shorter guns and that's why I like the Centurion. <clears throat> so what's really cool about it is that the Centurion uh, has a full size grip, full size magazines, so all the accessories, uh, grips and magazines and everything else are going to be the same as the 92, which are plentiful and, and everything's really cheap. Uh, for instance, these grips right here, they got some wear to it, as you can see, uh, but not bad. Uh, but, you know, 15 bucks will get me new grips, which I might do. But I'm thinking of getting some kind of custom grips. I haven't decided what I want yet. Maybe some G10 or something like that, which are going to be plentiful as well because of the size is the, is the same. Um, let's see what else. Oh, so this one came with uh, three mags. Now this is the original mag, Leo marked. Um, and the reason for that right there, it says uh, restricted law enforcement government use only. Uh, in 94, the, the so-called assault rifle ban came out, uh, which was also a magazine ban of manufacturing of high capacity, mag so-called high capacity magazines, anything over 10. Uh, was a no-no. So the uh, 96 versions of these uh, were issued with 11 round magazines because that was the capacity of the magazine um, and 15 rounds for the 92 but during the ban uh, which is you know 94 to 2004 um, they were 10 rounds everything was 10 rounds so that's why it made more sense back then to do the 40 than the 9 because if you're going to carry a big gun like this you might as well have a bigger, more powerful round, 10 rounds of 40 than 10 rounds of nine. So I think that's why the 40 was really the gun to have back then um, in, in this series, just because of, of, you know, because of the size of the pistol and the rounds that you're getting. Uh, now, the police and, mil and the, the police and the government agency, agencies were exempt from the high capacity ban. So those guns are gonna have the full size magazines now, since this one came out in 97, Beretta has a really good serial number lookup now. You put in your serial number and they have almost all the recent guns from the 1990s or so up until now. The early Italian guns is more problematic on getting more information by the serial number, but anything made here or imported after a certain day, it's going to show up. So I put this one in here um, when I was in the store. Boom, it came up in 97. Uh, it was issued with high cap magazines no night sights, double action, single action, everything was perfect. Everything that the gun was, was listed on the Beretta site. Um, and to confirm that also is uh, their police guns and government guns are often marked with a shield and a P inside of it. Now that it used to be right here. And I don't know if, uh, if they stopped here and moved it to the trigger guard or if it was concurrent, but I think the early ones, there was a kind of a big shield here with a P in it, meaning that it was a police issue or manufactured for police agencies. But now you're gonna see that it's right, right there. It's a lot smaller. Let's see if I can get the right angle. And there you go, see that P in the shield? So that means it, it was one of the police versions and that's why it came with the high cap magazines. Uh, during the ban period, which was another cool thing about this gun that it's not going to have 10 round mags. So this was the real, the uh, military, uh, I mean the police issue one. Also what this had was a metal floor plate and this was replaced with plastic later on. So this is the original one, metal floor plate, all metal magazine. 
And here's the other two magazines it came with, which is really very nice. I'm going to get more magazines, but three is good for now. Plus my other Brettas, the magazines fit. All right, so here's one of the other ones, 15 round magazine, another high cap. And this one is also a Beretta. And this was this one's pretty much identical to this one without the Leo markings. This one doesn't have the Leo markings on it. Otherwise, it's um, all Beretta. And all these, you're going to see, uh, even though they, they're probably all made by Metgar, uh, they are factory marked magazines. Metgar made them for Beretta for a long time. See the PB? That's Pietro Beretta. Uh, that means that it was uh, made by Beretta in Italy. Or Metgar for Beretta, which is up to the Beretta specs. Same here, we got the PB, nine millimeter. And what's really cool, the bonus that came with this gun is a 92A1 magazine made by Beretta, 17 rounder, made in Italy. Yeah, nice, 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 17, how cool. When the 92A1s came out, they upgraded the mags and were able to fit 17 rounds. They're probably making the magazine shorter. And there is, um, now, if you look at the base plate, the magazine goes down and that's how they could fit it. They found a little bit more room in here to bring the spring down. As you can see, that floor plate is different than this one and different than this one. So if you're into the Beretta magazine, you can see there's a difference here. So with this one, you got the thinnest profile because it's made out of aluminum. And so they're able to make that smaller and not have it break. When they moved up to this, to the when they got rid of this on the early guns, they moved up to polymer. It's cheaper to make. When they moved up to polymer, you can see that it's straight across and thicker. And then the A1 is even bigger and thicker yet, so the spring goes in there. Uh, but they're all ultra reliable and they all work great. There's no problem with Beretta's ejecting the magazines. They just fly out, uh, no issue. Uh, very nice there and also it looks a little bit different on the bottom when these are installed so As you can tell we got that kind of profile and then with this one It's gonna look like that And on this one, it's gonna look like like that The other thing about this gun that was awesome is that um, and all the bread as I had after certain years in, in the in the 90s 2000 they started replacing the metal parts with plastic parts or plastic over sheet metal and that includes the trigger the trigger the magazine release and the um the decocker safety they're going to be sheet metal inside covered with polymer on the outside a lot of people don't like that so they look for uh, the original all metal parts and that's hard to find in bread is after um after certain dates and it, I don't know when they started changing each specific item, but they transitioned over the cheaper manufactured polymer parts. Um, that includes the guide rod. So modern Berettas usually have a polymer guide rod, sheet metal, uh, polymer coated safety, decocker, trigger, magazine release, and all polymer is very common. Uh, the This is the mainspring housing and the lanyard. Uh, right here. Let me take this out so you can see it better. Um, this right here. Um, I've had all metal guns before, but still this was uh, poly was uh, polymer instead of aluminum. Now this gun here, unbelievably, every single part um, was made, I guess in 97, they were still doing all metal. So everything is metal on this one. This one has the aluminum, um, the aluminum, uh, mainspring housing, lanyard, all metal mag release, all metal safety, all metal um, trigger, all metal guide rod. We're gonna, I'll take the slide off, you can see the inside. Um, so that's another thing. So when I happened into this store, I got like the original all metal parts, just to, not only was I looking for a 92 um, Centurion, um, a 92 Centurion double action, single action, but I wanted metal parts and this had everything. So man, I, I'm really happy with this gun. It shoots phenomenally. Um, I was a little bit concerned at first when I first saw it because um, I have pictures, but I haven't printed them out from my computer. Um, but I have pictures when I first bought it. And from, and this happens a lot when someone wears a ring, 
this whole area, there's a large area that the silver is showing from the anodizing was rubbed off. So there was a lot of um, uh, silver showing here and there was all like silver showing here, you know, all over the grip pretty much there was um, abrasions and normal wear you would see to the aluminum, but I used the aluminum black and I think it came out pretty great. You should have seen it before. Um, so it was carried a lot by a police officer or government agency or whatever. Um, and, and it had wear and you can see also on the slide, the normal wear you'd have from holster wear. And this, I usually use a uh, cold blue to touch up and make a gun look a lot better since I'm going to carry it. And it's not a, like a collector's piece. Um, and I usually bluing, but this one here, as you can see, there's scratches here. Um, now Beretta uses like an epoxy paint, believe it or not, that's baked on. Um, and really good against wear, but you can't like touch it up very well. I haven't found a way to touch it up too well. So I just left that alone. This had uh, was right down to the metal. So I used some cold blue to just make it look a little nicer. So overall the gun now looks pretty good. So that's what it looked like when I got it. Um, here we have the three dot white sights. And the, I'm going to put more paint in the front sight because I don't know if you can see that. See if I can get it to focus. There, there we go. See that dot in the middle? That shouldn't be there. That's like a perfect hole, perfectly centered. So I think the police officer took a needle or something and wanted a more precise aiming point, um, which you can't see here, but when you're actually sighting, you can see that little dot. So that makes, I think that's what they did. I, I, I find it difficult to believe that that was a random, see that dot, that that was a random thing. Uh, so that's something that was on there as well. Uh, let's see what else I can say about this. Um, yeah, so this is about 4.3 uh, inch barrel instead of the 4.9. So you're going to get a shorter barrel, tiny bit less velocity, uh, velocity um, but an extremely controllable gun. And of course, this works in the normal double action, single action method. So you load up, you can decock, leave the safety off like that, and then pull out the holster and just pull the trigger. And then it's going to cycle. And then the next shot is going to be a very short pull and you can do a rapid fire and it's going to continue to do that. Uh, very nice system. Um, what else? The double action only ones are going to have a lighter trigger pull because you got to pull the trigger along for, uh, for every shot. And that one has a lighter uh, mainspring spring in it to make uh, it uh, a lot easier to pull. And the other ones don't have that. All right, so let's take the top off. We'll look at those uh, parts inside. Oh, also this one came with um, upgraded Allen screws. I don't particularly like those. A lot of people swap them out. I find I like the slotted screws better, so I might put those on here. And the reason why is if you're out somewhere and your grips are loosening up, it's kind of hard to get an Allen screw to tighten it up. With the uh, slotted screws, you can use almost anything, any screwdriver, knife or something at least to tighten it until you can get to a real screwdriver. At least you can do something. So that's the only, I don't know, that's the only downside I think to the um, to the Allen uh, screws that everybody likes to upgrade. That's just my two cents on that. All right, so let's take this apart. So the way that you would um, disassemble this gun is you always wanna make sure it's safe. Um, these Berettas, you don't have, have to re retract the slide. You actually just push the button here on this side and then turn this down as you can see and it comes off. But I don't like to do that because safety reasons, um, the best way to do it is to put the safety on like that. And then you would push the button on this side underneath and then turn this lever down and then pull back to release it. And it's going to come right off just like, just like that. Let's look at the frame first. So as you can see on the rails, which are, you can see some of the aluminum right there showing through. But this is exceptionally low rounds because there is hardly any wear. You're going to see this normal wear on top right here. And that's a tiny bit of wear. That's not much at all. So that's why when I took it apart in the store, um, they were kind enough to let me take the slide off. If, if any store doesn't let you take the slide off and look inside, a 1911 is more problematic. You can scratch the gun up. It's a lot harder to do. But any other gun, a like Glock or something, it's going to be easy to take apart. If they don't let you do that, I, I'm not going to buy the gun usually. So I want to see inside. Yeah, really nice. Gorgeous inside. 
Oh, this one is made, looking at the serial number here, the BER, this one is made in the United States. I really like Italian Berettas, but they didn't make a lot of Centurions in Italy, if any, I don't know, but they're, they're usually made in um, Echo Creek, Maryland, uh, like this one here. Made in USA, there's the PB logo, serial number on the frame. And another cool thing about this gun, because it's early 97, um, there are no warnings on the slide. And there you see the slide markings. Model 92FS, Centurion, caliber 9mm. Hetatin, patented. And then here's the warning. I mean, you can barely see it. And it just says, um, free from Beretta, warning, read the manual. And there's that shield. Now, if this was an Italian-made one, this is where you're going to see all the proof marks from uh, Italy. Um, that that's required for them to put on their guns for export and stuff. Here's the back. There's some wear here too. The Luma Black really took care of that, no problem. And this here, from putting the magazines in and out, all this was white, pretty much silver. And look how good it came out. Let me show you what that looks like. I don't know what I use. I've been using this for a year. And that's, uh, Birchwood Casey's Luma Black. If you don't have this and you have a lot of SIGs and Berettas, I highly recommend this. It'll touch it up really nice. Matches really well, too. All right, let me decock this so it doesn't uh, doesn't cause any damage. Let's see if there's anything else I need to talk about this. Well, I think that's it. And now, <clears throat> now here's the here's the slide assembly. We have the guide rod and spring. Take that out, and then all you do is push on this, and the barrel comes out that way. It doesn't come out of the front. That's a good hunk of steel right there, and here's the recess for the locking block that's going to drop down in there. This video is going to be a quick look, but I guess I'm going through it pretty good. I usually put some Battleborn grease on the slides. This way, no matter how long I don't use it, we're still going to have some lubrication on the slide. I'm going to oil the other parts, a little bit on the locking blocks as well. And then right here, I'll show you that. That's the, um, the firing pin block. So when you pull the trigger, only when it goes all the way to the back, that's going to lift up and allow the firing pin to hit the, the primer. So that's another safety that's in there. All right, so here's the spur guide. Now, these are usually polymer. And this one is, um, this one here is like a solid hunk of steel. And I use, all my Berettas have steel. If they came with polymer, I replace them like 20 bucks or something like that you even get tungsten too even heavier and there's the spring now the only parts that aren't interchangeable with the 92 series is going to be the guide rod and spring because the slide and barrel are longer it's the wrong length so these are proprietary to the centurions and also the compact the compact is identical on top the compact 92 has this top with a smaller butt frame that holds uh, 13 rounds. That's how the compact differs from the Centurion. It's in the grip. And the compact differs from the, the full size by the grip and the, the slide and barrel assembly. But differing from the 92 full series is gonna be the slide is shorter, the barrel shorter, and the guide run and spring are shorter. So these parts aren't interchangeable, but everything else is. So that's how that works. Also, another bonus on this, and it must have got changed, it must have, the, the locking block must have been upgraded to the latest version just when this was coming out. So I got the exact perfect year that this was made to have all the metal parts um, that were disappearing, but yet it was a year when the newest locking block came out. And there's weaknesses in the earlier locking blocks. Some people don't have any problem with them, but there is a weakness, and I'll show you where. So this is the locking block here. This is the lugs that drop down into the recess of the slide. Right here is where the, um, the recoil spring guide rod uh, rests. And right over, let me get a pen here. So let's see if we can see it. So right in here, in that little recess. Now the original ones, that was a 90 degree angle, and that's where this would crack, right here. This is for any Beretta. You can see it on this side as well. And then they radiused it on the second variation. And then on the third, I believe it's third and final variation, um, this area right here has an even more rounded. And if you know engineering or metallurgy at all, anytime you have 90 degree angles or sharp angles, it tends to 
uh, crack there and, and the round radius here distributes the forces better instead of at one angled point and these hold up incredibly well and that's the latest version so i couldn't have asked for a better one so that's how that that's how that works all right reassembly is very easy all you do is uh put the barrel back in to make this drop i just tap it like that and it just drops into place and then the spring goes in here and just catches on that and then all you do is Put it back on the rails, pull it back. I usually pull it, oh, pull it back and lock it. Then once you lock it, you can flip that back and then lower it down gently. I don't drop my slide on uh, empty chambered guns, especially on this aluminum one and stuff. I like to ease it down. All right, so let's see if I, that's what it looks like there. Let's see if I forgot anything. I'll look at my notes real quick. There's so much to these guns here. Um, I think that's about it. I think I covered everything. Oh, it's, uh, the weight on this bad boy is 32.4 ounces, fully loaded, 38, 39, which isn't too bad. Uh, that aluminum really helps to lower it. So you're looking at about a two pound gun. Uh, it's about an ounce and a half lighter than the full size because you've got a, you know, smaller slide and a lot less metal than the one that comes out to here. Now, one last thing, the idea of this kind of gun that has a shorter barrel and the full-size grip, that's something that the Glock, as you know, if you know Glocks at all, their 19X that they just came out that was um, built for the military trials and they put onto the, um, the civilian market. A lot of controversy on that gun, but anybody who shot it loves it. And it's basically this concept here, and this concept here was taken probably from the Colt Commander, which I also love, and that's the gun I carried back in the, uh, in the 70s and 80s. Um, but the uh, combat commander, the all steel one, and then the lightweight commander are the uh, full size grip and a shorter barrel of the full size version. And that's what I carried. And that's, I think, why I like them. They're so easy to control. If you've never tried them, they're a lot, for me, easier. Some people find the five inch barrel guns easier to control, but I find the shorter ones easier with a full size grip. And any videos I saw of the 19X, and I own one myself. But the 19X is the same concept as this, and once a person shoots it, they usually love it. So that's my plug for full-size grip, a little bit shorter barrel. Easy to carry, get in, in, out of vehicles, and that sort of thing. And that's why the 96 and 92 Berettas in, the t in their day were some of the most beloved guns. And for some reason, the 96 that had a little bit of uh, reliability problems with the 40, um, everything I said about reliability is with the 9. But the, the, um, so many police agencies weren't having problems with their Centurion 40s. There's something about the slide uh, and the momentum forces and stuff that those were very reliable. So that's just a little side note on the 40. I think I'll wrap it up here. It's getting a little bit long. Uh, but thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And hit the little bell notification when I make more videos. And we'll do... I love police and military guns, so you're going to see that a lot here. And also, you're going to see a lot of earlier guns, uh, hence the name Classic Gun Reviews. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Take care.